everybody, it's Carrie with Seed to Spoon. Happy March. I know it is different everywhere across the United States that you live. The weather is completely different, but here it is a beautiful day. We are actually in the 70s. It is amazing, but not to let that tease us because we still have a lot of cold weather coming up ahead next week and some really cold lows coming in as well. But still, it's a really nice day today. So I thought that I would take advantage of the really beautiful day and I would talk about everything that we're gonna be doing for this month of March. March is always a really, really busy month for us. We are not only still starting seeds indoors, we are working on up potting some of those. We are hardening off a lot of our seedlings. We are planting, transplanting outdoors. We are starting seeds outdoors. So month is, or March is going to be a really, really busy month. And like I said, the weather where, you know, wherever you are is always going to be a little bit different. So things that we might be planting now in our area may not be something that works for where you are. We are in zone seven in Oklahoma. So we are in the very center of the United States. And some things that we can plant here now are not appropriate for those who are up north. So just keep that in mind. But the beauty of our app is that it is designed for no matter where you live, it will give you exact planting dates based on your location. It'll pull from your nearest weather station that is closest to where you are and give you exact planting dates on when you should be planting things. And since everybody is kind of on a, on a different planting schedule, I thought that I would talk more in general about things that I'm gonna be doing this month to be getting everything ready to go. So I thought that I would start inside today, even though it is such a beautiful day out there. I thought that I would start today by going over some of the things that we have going inside and how we're going about getting some of our seeds started. And this right here, I'm inside of our house in right by our kitchen and I have a grow light set up right behind me. And then I have a biodome underneath it. This is a 60 cell biodome. And I took the lid off because these seedlings are all doing fantastic. These are doing really, really well. So I'm going to need to thin these down and up pot these and then start to get them ready for the process of going outside. But whenever I first planted them, I had this biodome lid on top. So I'll show you what it looks like. So I had it more like this. So while the seeds were sprouting indoors, I had this on top and it made it so this environment right here was super humid and it really helped the seeds to germinate. I've had such an amazing germination rate this year and I've only been using these biodomes and they've been fantastic. I am absolutely loving them so far. And just so you know too, for the month of March, we are giving away, not this size, um, but it is Park Seeds Jumbo Cell ones. I'll show you some examples. I have some out in our other grow area, but the 18 cell ones. Those ones we're gonna be giving away. And if you want more details about that, I'll link in the description for that video that goes through all the specifics of that. I've had a, such a great, fantastic germination rate with these. I think only, I only had one pod that didn't germinate and what I did, I just came behind and I popped in a couple behind it and whenever I noticed that it wasn't coming up and then a couple days later, those ones came up. It's been working fantastic. I'm really happy with them so far. So we've been starting indoors a lot of our cool season crops. We have a lot of cabbage, cauliflower, broccoli, bok choy, kohlrabi. I feel like you name it. Yeah, <laughs> we started it. We've been very, very busy. So we've been getting a lot of our cool season crops going and not only some of our cool season crops, but also doing a lot of our tomatoes and peppers and getting a head start on those as well. So this was our indoor seed starting area and I will take you out to our shop area and I will show you everything that we have going on in our bigger grow area that we have. 
Okay, so I'm out here in our shop area where we have two different racks here that we got just from local hardware stores. I mean, these are usually fairly cheap. And one of them we actually got off of Facebook Marketplace too. So we try and keep everything as cost efficient as possible because we like to grow a lot. So whenever we're growing a lot, we, we try to just keep in mind how to keep the cost down as much as possible. So I do have quite a few things going over here. We have huge heat mats underneath up here, and these are for our tomatoes and peppers. So I love to have heat mats underneath these because it really helps to germinate them. It makes it go a lot faster, but it's not necessarily needed. You don't have to have a heat mat. It's just really helpful for them and it makes it go faster. Like these peppers are already starting to sprout. So I'm really happy. They can take up to a month sometimes if you don't have heat on them. But I went through, I pulled off the domes here for these tomatoes because all of them have sprouted and I'm gonna need to here soon because it looks like a lot of our peppers are sprouting too. So I usually keep these on until most all of the seeds, if not all of them have sprouted. So once they outgrow that area, I know I mentioned earlier that I was going to be up potting and what I do when I would do that, I just pull out those little sponges in the biodome and I place them into, I'll show you. I place them into something more like this, where it is able to, um, able to grow a lot larger and not have the constraints that the biodome does on the size. And that way it frees up the biodome too, so I can start more seeds and get those going. And these sets in here, I hope you can see it. If you can't, I'll shoot another video so that way you can see it as well. But I have fans, like box fans set up on both of these. So that way I can plug them in and run some wind to them. So it helps before they go outside, it helps them to get used to the windy conditions. Especially here in Oklahoma, we get a lot of wind. So it's really good to have the plants prepared for that. And it's really important to go through the hardening off process. The fans also help too, if you have any issues with mold growing on your seedlings. I made a video talking all about moldy seedlings, like what to do and how to prevent that and how to go about treating that if it does happen to you. Because we had a lot of issues with that a couple years past whenever we were doing a larger grow setup and it was difficult to deal with, but we finally got it under control. And now we've learned how to prevent that from happening or if it does happen to happen or happen to <laughs> happen again, we can go about preventing or treating that once that happens. So I mentioned the process of hardening off. So that pretty much, I'm gonna make an in-depth video whenever I go through and I take these. These ones up here will be my first ones that I bring out there because these are my cool season, broccoli, cauliflower, asparagus, things like that. I'm gonna be going through the process with them. Pretty much once they are an inch or two tall, they have their at least their first set of true leaves. That is the point that you can start to go through and harden them off. So basically, just real quick, what hardening off is, is just slowly getting your plants used to going outdoors. So they've been babied all their life, which is good, that's what they needed, their babies. But these plants have been babied all their lives. So they need to get used to the environment outdoors before they're just thrown in and planted in the ground. So we just slowly go through the process of hardening them off, getting them used to the climate and the conditions that they're going to be in. And like I said, I'll go through and make a longer, more in-depth video about how to harden off your seedlings too, whenever we go through that process with them. So be looking out for that video. While I'm out here, I do wanna talk a few more just basic seed starting tips. So it's really important to have a actual seed starting mix. The one we use is right here. We order this through our app actually. I will show you how to go through that. I'll do a pop up a screen recording, but you can pull this up through the app and we order through Park Seeds website. So this is available there. You can also go through and make your own seed starting mix if you're gonna be doing a lot. And um, that is really just a mixture of peat moss or coconut core. And then you can, for the other part, it would be either vermiculite or perlite. So it's a mixture of half and half of those things. And 
you want to use that for your seed starting mix. And then once you take them outside and plant them, that's when you can start adding in the compost and things like that. So at this stage of the baby plant's life too, it's really important to try and water underneath. Most all of these, everything that we have going right now is sub-irrigated. So these biodomes all are watered from down below and the sponges soak them up. And then also right here, these are the ones that we up potted from our biodomes. And these have a secondary area down here as well where it holds water, that it pulls water up and plants and waters the plants from below. And I do keep a mister in here as well. So that way I can miss the top if the top of the seedlings need some water. But typically I just let them sub irrigate from below and then start to transition to watering them more from the top whenever they go start the hardening off process. And before you go through your hardening off process with your plants, you need to make sure that your weather is going to be appropriate for the plants that you're putting out. So that being said, things like peppers and tomatoes, especially, we are going to be really watching the weather and making sure that we don't have any cool days coming whenever we put them out. And that even being said, a lot of times here in Oklahoma, we have sneaky last really cold days that are really late sometimes. There was one year that there was a really late freeze and we had to move all of our peppers back inside after we had already planted them outside because we had really, really cold weather coming in. And peppers are one that once they get stunted from the cold, they don't do very well. So we wanna make sure that we really baby them. And again, this is where our app is gonna come in real handy. Yes, hello, come here. Uh, this is where our app is gonna come in real handy for you because it'll give you exact planting dates as well as give you the weather too. There's a weather tab on the bottom and it'll tell you whenever you should put out your plants. And the weather tab will also mention if there's a predicted frost coming up too. So that way you can be more aware if you can go outside and cover your plants, or if you're like us and you plant things in, you know, things like smart pots where they're movable fabric raised beds and you can bring those indoors, absolutely do that and pay attention to your weather. Okay, so let's go head outside to our main garden area and I'll talk about everything that we are going to be doing this March in our outdoor area. Okay, so here we are outdoors. This is where a lot of our work is going to be done this March. So as you can see behind me, it is kind of a mess. <laughs> We've kind of let it go this past month because it's just been so cold and we haven't been able to harvest anything or really grow much. So. This last month we kind of just, we took off the protection, all of our covers and let everything go. And we've opened up our gate here that we had around our garden. And we have let our pigs and our chickens and all of that go through our garden. So we let these animals go through our garden for many different reasons. They, especially the chickens, will really help with pest control. So if there were any pests that were burrowing underground that were trying to hide out for the winter, hopefully they have dug those up and have eaten them. The pigs are also going through and tilling the ground too where we had wood chips and if we had any grass roots left over, they're going through and taking those up. So that way, hopefully we have less grass, less weed issues that we have to deal with in between our beds this year. So a lot of what we're doing, we already put the animals to work, <laughs> is we're gonna come through next too and we're gonna be picking up all of, picking up after them essentially and flattening out where they have gone through and dug up. And then we'll lay down a fresh layer of some wood chips too to just make it look a little bit better and get some fresh compost in here as well. We like to freshen up our smart pots that we have with just some new compost each season. It really helps to bring more life to the soil and it really helps boost how well these plants are going to be doing for you. So something else I'm gonna be doing quite a bit of is, well, getting this fence back up first of all. All we need to do is for this fence that we have, this is a Premier One electric poultry netting. And we have this for a few different reasons. We have a lot of chickens and a lot of these chickens free range our property. So beforehand, they would go through and eat our plants. 
So we definitely did not want that to happen because after learning my lesson the hard way last last year, I have learned to always have a fence around our garden whenever we have our chickens and always have, so these ones right here have a little charger that you can connect to also. So it sends out just a little shock every so often. And then, so if you touch it, it's like a little shock for you but it, it'll really shock the animals and they will be like, oh, I don't wanna go in there. So it really helps to train them to stay out. So this works for poultry of all types that can't fly across this. And then also it really helped too, cause we had a big, I don't know if they were raccoons or possums, something that actually chewed holes in our fence before we put electric on it. So we learned we had to put electric on it since we lived out here in the country. And so that prevented that from happening. So this fence has worked wonders for us just to protect our garden since we've gotten it up and had just a little charger set to it. It has really protected our garden from a lot of different critters. So these fences will really help with anything that you have like ground issues with. I mean, even the cats, the cats don't even go through them. Before we had this fence and one of the biggest things that we relied on also for things just like birds, like wild birds flying in was a, was a sprinkler. So these automatic sprinklers are pretty cool then they are fun to play on tricks on your kids as well <laughs> i will just mention that it is pretty fun but these ones are, are pretty cool you put them in the garden you hook them up to some water and they will go off if they sense movement for um, if anybody walks by i say anybody because it will go off for you as well if you forget about it but if you have like a stray cat problem or if a bird flying in is getting your tomatoes or is stealing your seeds Check these out and give them a try because we found it worked really well. So something else we've done too, is you can see these PVC dome hoop houses right here. Over the winter, we built those and we had these, I mean, you can see some of the plastic sheeting right down here to the side of them. We just took those off and um, put those to the side for right now. And we'll fold those up and we'll put them in some storage bins here soon. But for the time being, what we're gonna be using these for whenever we plant seeds is probably either put like some sort of insect netting or something over top of that just to protect our seedlings as they get a little bit older. Hopefully the bugs won't get to them. We've had issues with hot worms before, even as some, something as simple as birds flying in from up above and stealing seeds too. Something else you can do too if you have some issues with wild birds or cats digging too, is either laying down like just some burlap on top. We've also done burlap and then some hardware remesh just sitting on top while we're germinating seeds. So that way they'll be left alone until they come up. But once they do come up, you need to make sure that you take all that off so that way they can get some sunlight and fresh water and all that. Looks like we got a pig sleeping on the job behind us. <laughs> I didn't even notice her at first when I came in here. That's Miss Piggy. She, she was in here working, it looks like. She's been digging up quite a bit of grass, doing lots of good work in here, haven't you? She's a good worker. <laughs> so a lot of this month is really just going to be about protection, about getting everything ready out here too. And I am gonna be planting quite a bit, transplanting as well as starting seeds directly from outdoors too. Um, I have this area right here, here I'll show you. This is one of my favorite parts. I love this. This is our cattle panel arch trellis that we have. And I love growing things up this. So we have smart pot long beds across the bottom of these. And then we like to grow peas for this cool season along the back. And then we let the peas grow up the top up here. And then we have these hanging baskets hung up all along and we plant some flowers to attract beneficial critters and to look pretty. You know, you, of course you need that too. And this is just one of my favorite areas. I love this area so much. So I'm excited. I'm every year, I'm super excited to get this planted out and get peas started and get my flowers going and all of that. So besides peas, other things I'm gonna be direct 
seeding outdoors are going to be a lot of the root crops because these are ones that you don't really want to start indoors. So these include our carrots, beets, turnips, those type of things. So we're going to wait. We're going to check the app and see when our opening is, when we should be planting that for our area. And then we're going to be out here planting those seeds. As you're planting, it's really important too to keep in mind what plants go well next to each other because there are certain plants that do really well together that really help each other out and make each other grow really well or give each other a bountiful harvest or help repel certain pests. And the same idea, there's also some plants that don't do well together and do really bad and you should never plant them together. Our app helps to make that easy too. So if you are going to be, say, planting peas like I am here soon, just look up peas in the app. Up on the top where it says friends, I think it says friends, <laughs> you click that and then it'll show you the friends and the enemies and it'll go through and it'll, it'll say like which plants you should plant next to it, which plants you shouldn't plant next to it. So it's really good to go through and just look at that, make sure that you're planting things next to each other that like being next to each other and not planting things that don't like to be next to each other. It'll really save you a lot in the long run. So that's a rundown of everything that we are gonna be doing this month. I'm sure there's gonna be much more as our videos start coming in. I'm sure I will be releasing videos quite frequently as we are out here working and planting more things because we are gonna be so busy out here and I'm sure we're going to be planting a whole bunch and making lots of videos as we go through the process of getting everything ready out here and planting and all of that. So be watching for all of our videos and you guys can come along for our fun ride that we're going to be on this spring. Thank you so much for watching and if you guys have any questions about anything that you should be doing this month or anything that you want me to talk more in depth about, let me know in the comment section and I will definitely be getting back with you. I will be making lots more videos, so make sure that you stay tuned and you pay attention to our channel. Oh, and also just a reminder too, this March, we are gonna be giving away an 18 cell park seed biodome along with some of the park seed whopper tomato seeds. I am growing them for the first time this season and I'm super excited to try them out. I will keep you all updated as I go through. They're supposed to be absolutely amazing and I've heard nothing but great things about them. So I'm super excited to go on this journey. Okay, so like I said, if you guys have any questions, please let me know and I will be getting back with you. I will see you again very soon. Bye.